Hey guys, Jason Shellcross of the Fantasy Football Sackos here, back again with another episode for you. Alex and I are going to be talking about studs, sackos, and sleepers for this upcoming year. Stay with us. Let's get into it. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you got to do, YouTube world. Uh, for everybody else, follow us on social media at the FF Sackos and go ahead and check out our website, the fantasy football sackos.com for everything you need fantasy football this season. Let's go. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shalcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Fantasy football sackos. Back again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, episode, what is this? 13? Are we at a baker's dozen? Alex. Sure. <laughs> Jason Shalcross, Alex Krogh. Back again for the fantasy football sackos. Today we are going to be talking about studs, sackos, and sleepers. Alex, you got something new in front of your face. What is that? What is that thing? <laughs> yeah, you harassed me until I got a real microphone. So whoa, whoa. I, I have one now and now people can hear my dull and unexciting voice in uh, a little bit higher clarity. Hey, man. For so this, th that's exciting, I think. <laughs> for the sake of audio quality. And by the way, just for everybody out there, I was not the only one that suggested that Alex get a mic. I think even the missus suggested that you get a mic. Did she not? Yeah, she did. I, I will also say that it just sounds so much like you've always sounded a lot better than me and I was jealous. And so here we are. I have a mic and I'm excited for it. I, I think we actually sound professional now. Not to say we didn't beforehand, but I, I think we're actually... <laughs> Like it's going to be like we're sitting right next to somebody if they're listening in their car. So hello. Yes. Alex is no longer outside the window. He is now inside the car. He has graduated from the trunk. <laughs> oh, did you just call me drunk from the trunk or being drunk? Oh, I'll say oh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of both. It's probably fine. all the above, yep. especially after your Speaking birthday weekend. I was going to say, speaking of drunk, uh, oh, you had no. a, ex you had exciting uh, Sunday afternoon. So for those of you who are not aware, I'm turning 32 uh, on the 19th. So just in a couple days and, and my lovely wife decided to throw me a somewhat of a surprise birthday party. And uh, Jason had a little bit too much Kraken. Um, but other the than that, it was, was pretty spicy. Yeah, it was it was a great time. Um, so really appreciate everybody that was coming Highlight on. They, the we actually talked definitely was definitely the outfit changed you pulled right in the middle of it though i i would have to say yeah so jason um with with me also becoming a dad in a couple of days jason also decided to uh purchase me some about calf high champion white socks along yes. with along with some 605 new balance shoes um 608s don't insult them sorry 608 sorry <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and so, yeah, I got to, got to rock that, um, part of the dad club upcoming. So he, he fitted me for what my future is. And I'm just uh, saying, man, if you're going to be a dad, you can't be walking around in trendy slides anymore. Like you got to look the part, man. You got to look the part and calf high white tube socks and new balance shoes are where it's at. So, yeah. So just, just two retorts to that. And then we'll actually get to our, our triple S episode here. But I, I will say that one, there are two old people that walk around my neighborhood with khaki shorts on tube socks up to their mid calf and new balance shoes. You start a uh, gang. Yeah, we're we're basically the three man gang. We're gonna, yeah, we're the three we're, musketeers. We're, yeah, we are taking over the world. Uh, <laughs> How bad are the hairlines? Uh, I think I have more hair on my face than they do on their head. So, um, and then the other part is, and I don't know if you saw this, but. Um, Patrick Mahomes did a GQ shoot and oh. um, and in the said GQ shoot, he was wearing socks and sandals. 
So maybe I'm wow. just ahead of my time in, in rocking the socks and sandals. Yeah. I just, just want to throw that out there. Alex and Krog, trendsetter. The fantasy football Sackos is not a fantasy football brand. It is a lifestyle brand. You're damn right. Come join us. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. While you bring up Pat Mahomes, he was or is one of the few 99s in Madden this year. So congrats, Pat Mahomes. That's uh, shocking, amazing stuff. Good job by him. He's right. good at football. Uh, one interesting tidbit, though, about Madden, just because it's your boy, and that's Taysom Hill. In in terms of quarterback speed, where do you think Taysom Hill ranks? Uh, top five, I would hope. Third. He's third. <laughs> there he's, we go. <laughs> he's third in QB speed. That's what I'm talking about. I My don't know guy. who he's behind other than Lamar, but because I would assume Lamar is number one, but I don't know who I'm number sure two would ahead. be. I'm sure he's ahead of Cam Newton, and that's really all I care about. That's all you care about. All right. Let's get into these studs, sackos, and sleepers. Uh, and that was a nice little seg you because we are professionals. My stud for this season is Lamar Jackson. Surprise, surprise, everybody. I'm planting my flag Whoa, now. Really, really getting out ahead of uh, look, I mean, this is a hot. This is a hot take. Look. He is going to be the first quarterback since Dante Culpepper to repeat as QB one. And which took place in 2003, 2004, back to back seasons. So I'm saying like it's it's not like it, it would it's not unheard of, but it's also rare. Like we're talking 15, 16 years here since somebody's gone back to back. And so I I like and, you know, everybody, everybody wants I feel like half the people like we Peyton, talk to just like talk Peyton like Manning. you included are going to be like, yeah, say that Lamar is going to get hurt because he runs too much or defenses are going to figure him out this year. And so he's not going to be as successful. It's like or he was hyper efficient. And so he's not going to like I'm just saying right now, Lamar Jackson, I think, is safely the QB one this season. So that's mostly because of the rushing yards floor that oh, we, we've talked about. Oh, it's completely because of the rushing yards. Wait, hold on. This is four four point passing touchdowns and the rushing yard floor. Yes. If it's six yeah. point passing touchdowns, I retract that statement entirely. Yeah. So I, I think that's important to clarify. Yes. I, I would also say I'm, I'm surprised that like Peyton Manning didn't do it or Tom Brady didn't do it. But I think there were some injuries mixed in there potentially. Uh, or even like a Mike Vick back in the back in the early 2000s. I'm surprised it's Culpepper or Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers. You know, all, all those guys have, have had, you know, pretty good seasons since then. So it, it is a little surprising that there have not been repeat back to back quarterbacks uh, going at, at number one. But again, I mean, Lamar is going to be really good. He led the league in touchdown passes last year. I think we both would agree that Mahomes is probably going to take that back over this year. So Mark Andrews, he's going to be good. It just depends on, on kind of what, what happens and yeah, he's going to be really good. Uh, Initial. So if you haven't yet, you should go back and listen to our don't draft Lamar Jackson podcast, which where is we basically, basically goes, a podcast about why everybody should go out and draft Lamar Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, what it evolved so listen, into. It didn't start that way. No, it didn't, but that, that's definitely where we ended up. So I think that was like episode three. I, I just don't, like, yeah, he's going to be really good. You know, in our mock draft episode last time, I took him early. I have him ranked at 11 in the top top 100 just because I'd rather just get him and not have to worry about the position. So I b- also think he's going to be, you know, clearly very good. It just depends on on where your threshold is is for taking him. And he, so in, in our league that we're in with it being a four, four points for a passing touchdown, I think you can definitely justify taking him where I took him, which was like 15 or 16. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes earlier in ours, honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he slipped in and, you know, picks nine through 12 somewhere in there just because somebody doesn't want to miss him at the turn. And they're right. happy with like three or four of the running backs or wide receivers that they could get on the way back. You're like... Well, Lamar's going to be gone because he's not going to be there at the end of the third. So either you get him or he's gone. And But the same could be also said for Kelsey and Kittle. I feel like if you pass on one of sure. them in that point, you're, he's not going to be neither one of them will fall back to the third either. Um, 
for everybody, we're obviously not expecting everybody to go back and listen to the Don't Draft Lamar Jackson podcast. So they I do, should. That's I, I'm actually expecting them <laughs> to do that. I don't know about you, but I yeah, mean, if you don't do that, I don't like you. For the people that you know want to continue with this, and the the I would just like to highlight some some Lamar Jackson stats. Um, I actually have some more over here. So let's do this. Uh, he was the 15th overall running back last year at the running back position. Only five running backs had more rushing yards than he did. Uh, he averaged 27.7 points per game and put up just under 416 fantasy points in 15 games because remember he did not play week 17 granted most fantasy leagues are over by then anyways but still for season stats uh it does matter um the quarterback two last season scored just over 21 points per game lamar's obviously 30 percent higher than that and that was dak prescott um quarterback 12 last season because again we're most of what we're talking about here is for 12 team leagues because that's sort of the standard or i guess the most most prevalent uh quarterback 12 last season posted 16 and a half points per game and lamar was almost 70 percent higher that was tom brady last year Lamar Jackson scored more than 30 points seven times last year, and no other QB did so more than three. <laughs> Oof, wow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just crazy stats. His rushing, 176 attempts for just over 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. That's with sitting fourth quarters in multiple games, and, you know, sometimes even like late third, or, and not playing week 17. Like, could you imagine? He could have easily gotten to 200 attempts there on the season. Um, it's a lot. He averaged a shade under 12 rushing attempts per game for 80 yards, and he averaged about a touchdown every other game. Um, now, everybody's talking about maybe he will rush less this season. So I did some numbers and some math, and if he reduced his rushing output by half for this season, 94 attempts, 640 yards, and four touchdowns, <clears throat> and you held everything else constant, he would have been quarterback three and only one point behind Russell Wilson at quarterback two and 10 points behind Dak. So right there, still in the quarterback one conversation, very easy chance. And then that's also if he's just, you know, rushing less for less yardage and less touchdowns. Theoretically, I mean, those could be a more more pass plays that they run. So that's assuming that they run the same number of plays, but just as a percentage. Um, Lamar Jackson's passing. He was 265 of 401 for just over 3,100 yards. He threw 36 touchdowns and only six picks. Um, he averaged under a shade under 27 passes a game. To give you an idea of how low that is, Dak averaged 37 and a quarter passes a game. So Dak threw more than 10 passes more per game. Matt Ryan averaged 38 and a half pass attempts a game. So you take, but, but you take these 20, you know, 27 pass attempts from Lamar and you sprinkle in the 12 rushing attempts on top of that. And all of a sudden you're talking the same amount of total plays. It's just that, you know, a third of his are rush attempts and they have such a huge build in built in floor. And then you want to talk about how freaking good this guy is. Um, when rushing, this is crazy. Uh, thank you, Pro Football Focus, for this stat that was put out today, actually. Um, Lamar Jackson led the league in total carries with that, that gained at least five yards or more before first contact. Okay. Lamar, Lamar Jackson led the league in rushes that gained five yards before any contact or more at 47 rushes, rush attempts last season. Guess how many Zeke had? Probably like two. No, no, no. Zeke had 39 that went five yards or further without contact. Before he got touched? Yes. Before contact. That's, that's crazy. Zeke was in second. 
Because at least like a lot of Lamar's are like scrambles or design run. Yeah. Like, so is it is it talking about from when he gets the ball or is he talking about from the line of scrimmage? It's total carries with five plus yards before contact. So theoretically, it would be from scrimmage. Okay. Wow, that's... I mean, to me, that makes at least a little bit of sense because a lot of design plays or even scrambles are he's ducking out of the pocket and going against the linebacker. So before a linebacker gets to him, he's already five yards. It also speaks to the quality of these guys offensive lines as well. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I I, I mean, Dallas has the best offensive line and they have for an extended period. So, I mean, I I, I went really low there, but they don't lie. You just got to follow them. So (laughs) third place was Christian McCaffrey. Guess how many CMC had 25, 34. So Lamar Jackson had 47 rushes of five yards before being touched and CMC only had 34. I say only like, it's not a lot. That's an obscene number, but it just goes to show like, Lamar Jackson was in wide open spaces when he was taken off. Um, so Dixie ba- chicks. There you go. Now, um, Lamar Jackson had 36 passing touchdowns compared to Dax 30. And uh, he did it on 200 fewer throws than Dak. So hyper, hyper efficient, long scoring plays from Lamar just raining touchdowns all the time and uh, absolutely obscene efficiency you know 200 fewer attempts um, a 33% lower in terms of total attempts he cut so so say you cut the amount of passing touchdowns by 33% to try and make up for that. You know, maybe say there's, that was just way outside of the mean and we're going to have some regression this season and he's going to just leave the rest of the passing stats alone as far as the yardage thing, because he, again, he only threw for over just over 3000. So just let's just say that he throws for less touchdowns. So if you cut the passing touchdowns by a third to coincide with how many fewer passes he threw than Dak, um, it would cut out about 100 points from his score and would drop him from QB1 all the way down to QB4 behind Russ, Dak, and Deshaun Watson. But still, like, in the conversation for QB1, I don't know. Like, I don't think any of that is actually going to happen, personally. Like, I think he's the surefire quarterback one when you also combine that with the easiest strength of schedule in the league and a playoff schedule that is so tasty at Cleveland, uh, home against Jacksonville, home against the Giants. You have the second ranked offensive line and the ninth lowest pressure rate last year. Like, yeah, I'm all about it all about Lamar this season. If he's there at the end of the first, I'm probably going to take him. If not, I'm like surefire taking him in the second. And I think he's going to live up to the draft capital. And I guess my like huge disclaimer in all of this is I have never been someone to say, Oh yeah, it's worth drafting a quarterback in the first three rounds. I've always been until Lamar. If you're in a four point passing touchdown league until Lamar, I have always said, wait until the 11th round. And just get somebody who's there because they're all sort of the same, especially the last four or five years. Now, I'm, I'm starting to rub off on you a little bit on the quarterback <laughs> thing, aren't I? Well, yeah, 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 kind of. I mean, especially once once we, you know, started mocking and seeing the other guys that are there, it's like, OK, why would I take that guy now when I could I'd rather pick up depth at X position or, you know, somebody I feel like could be a lottery pick. So you're definitely rubbing yeah. off. But yeah, and I, right. And that's a big reason why I literally only have two, two tiers. And then it's literally just everybody else because I don't care. Right. right. I don't care who it is. And there's no point in taking one until, until late. You play so, matchups and stuff. We talked about that in the Lamar Jackson yep. episode too. Yep. Absolutely. Um, all right. I, I got nothing else to say about Lamar. Anything else you want to add? I don't. Okay. He's, he should be good. Just worried about that Madden curse. That's that's really all I got, uh, honestly. I, I appreciate that. All right. Who's your stud this season? My stud? 
I, I feel like I'm like bastardizing your segment that, that you wanted to do here because yes, I, I'm going to, cause, cause I'm going to talk about kick kickers. I'm going to talk about stud kickers. Please don't turn it off. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, give him start the timer. Okay? Give him no, a 60 it's not second be... cl- clock to, to try and validate why you should I'm listen to a talk grown man. Talk about the importance of kickers because they're important. They're there. You have to start a kicker. So you might as well get a good one. That's this is all that I'm saying. So like we, we joked about doing a kicker and defense podcast, but we're not doing one. So I got to figure out a way to talk about them. And so this is I'm using our studs, sackos and sleepers episode to talk about kickers. So if we're really being honest, who is the first person that you generally drop from your team after your draft in like a classic 15 round draft? So, so you're usually drafting a kicker in the 14th or a defense in the 14th and a kicker or defense in the 15th, almost all the time. Right? So your first drop is generally whoever you pick in the 13th round. Usually right? You're, you're generally going to stay with who you picked last is going to be your first drop because all of a sudden you you're looking ahead and you make a preseason pickup add drop. And so you drop the guy in the 13th round. So he doesn't really have that much value to your team anyway. And so what I'm suggesting here with my studs is, is that you should be taking a kicker before the 13th round or before the 14th round and take them in the 12th or 13th if it's one of these two kickers. And Jason, I can just see the disdain growing on your face. But the reason I say this is because it's really important to get the number one guy at a position, right? Like we, as we've kind of gone through our rankings podcasts, if you can, if you know that you're getting a guy with a high floor, you're going to take him. So theoretically, Kickers should be one of the easiest positions to figure out and to project on a yearly basis. The guys that are on the best offenses are generally going to be the best kickers. Fair enough. Yeah. Justin Tucker. I mean, that's like the number one guy every year. Right. So it's Harrison Butker and it's Justin Tucker. We, they have the two best two, you know, two of the best quarterbacks in football. We've already talked about them at length. So here's this stat from ESPN. Okay. Justin Tucker in eight seasons has never finished lower than 11th as the kicker. So not, not great from like a, I mean that eight, eight seasons is a long season, but he's been a top four kicker each of the last four years. So if you can just pick him up, plug him, play him every week, you're instead of doing the rotisserie kicker selection that Jason likes to do and try to like guess what kicker he thinks is going to score a lot of points in a given week. I much prefer to take the approach of just plugging and playing a guy that's going to be in the top five all year, because at some point he's going to explode. So Justin Tucker, top four kicker each of the last four years. Harrison Butker, he was the number one kicker last year. He had 11 top 10 weeks last year. Uh, And the Chiefs have finished top nine in field goal attempts four out of the last five years. So if you can take one of these, one of those two players and take them in the 13th before people start picking kickers, Because people will take defenses early, but they generally never take kickers early. So what I'm suggesting is, is that if you can lock in one of these two guys in the 13th round and get whatever jabroni you were going to take in the 13th and get them in the 14th, and you're probably going to drop them before the season anyway, that there's value in doing that because you're probably just going to drop the guy anyway. Do do you disagree with that? Last year, I picked up Zang, Zang Gonzalez after like week two or week three, and I had him for the rest of the season. He finished with 127 points last year and Bucker had 147. So 20 points spread over a season. He had 35 field goal attempts. He made 31 of those 35. Butker had 38 attempts. He made 34 of 38. So three more attempts and three more field goals made. What, what, what team does Zane Gonzalez kick for? Arizona. 
Okay. So again, I mean, I got lucky, but like, I also dropped him on his bye week. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, Hey, I'm not you disagreeing holding with Tucker any- through a bye. Yeah. I, I actually usually do hold my top kickers through a bye only because I, they're going to finish that high. So I don't want somebody else to get him. And generally what I do is I wait for somebody to drop the Harrison Butker, I mean, Before I got lucky. Zane and Gonzalez I, had a really good year, and it was the first year anybody's heard anything about. It's Cliff Kingberry's kicker, right? And homeboy settled for field goal after field goal once they even got remotely in range. Like, yeah. So, but that's that's the thing. They had an offense that had a rookie quarterback that, that could move the, in the ball. Red zone. Right, but couldn't get the ball in the in the red zone. So those, like, of course, that's one of the kickers that you'd be looking for. Um, what Rojas for the for the Giants, like, that's another example where they had Danny Jones and he could move the ball, but he wasn't necessarily finishing drives. Like though, so if you're not going to get the two the top two kickers, the only advice that I have for kickers is to look for younger quarterbacks that might not be finishing those drives. But anyway, but so Tucker, Butker, those are the two that Were they I better think, than Lutz? Uh Lutz was actually two last year. Oh, okay. Um Tucker was four or Tucker was three last year, Butker was one. And gotcha. Will Lutz so was you two. think Tucker will do better than Lutz this season? Yeah. I I mean the again he's been in the top four the last four years. I don't know how much more consistent gotcha, you can be from right. a kicker perspective. So I, okay. I would much rather take that than, than a potential volatility. And I, I honestly, I can't believe I'm talking about kickers being studs, but it, for me, it makes sense to lock in a kicker early because it's, it's easier to project. You're going to take the ones that are on the best offense when they're scoring touchdowns. If they score three touchdowns, you're guaranteeing yourself three points generally. And then if they kick a field goal there at seven, already and and so kickers on on good teams have high floors tucker and butker i would say have the highest floor from a kicker standpoint so that's that's why i'm i'm saying you should at least at minimum consider them in the 13th before people start taking kickers just to lock one in because you're going to drop the guy anyway and chances are the guy you're going to take in the 13th is still going to be there in the 14th anyway okay all right uh, I know you hated every second of that, but I'm just saying logically to me, that makes a lot of sense because we always talk about, Hey, get the top guy, get the top guy. And so why should kickers be excluded from that is my thinking. I appreciate you and I appreciate <laughs> your opinions and I, and you hate it. I try to, uh, be genuine with that. Um, I did not enjoy it. We'll say <laughs> if that's, if, if I'm allowed to say that I didn't Ouch. enjoy it, I'm actually currently struggling to pull up our mock draft to see who you picked in the 12th round and to see if it was a kicker. Oh, um, well, you, actually, you can you go to what? your sacco. Yeah. Yeah. You No, I did not. I did not do that. It's, I did not take a it's kicker. On early. Insta. Un- you took Zuerlein in the 14th. I took Zane Gonzalez also in the 14th. But yeah, in the 12th, you took Mike Gesicki. I took Joe Burrow and then I took Rashad Penny in front of a kicker. You took Robbie Anderson before you drafted a kicker. So yeah, maybe, maybe it's, it, it's also a little bit different when you're drafting, uh, in front of, you know, with a bunch of people and have a little bit more time to actually think about, you know, not be verbalizing your thoughts and who to take. And also right. like, you know, a lot of times we just have the ESPN cheat sheet up. And so you're like, all right, when is, when are people going to just take, yeah. take yeah. this guy, you know, and we are not, you know, I guess, uh, I don't know, foolproof, like, you know, we are a league that has a defense go tragically early in like the eighth round or ninth round every year. So, um, oh yeah, don't worry. It's I'm, I, I get to talk about defenses next because you won't let me talk about either during your <laughs> just during get, a regular we're already pod. Here, let's just do it. Who's your sacco? <laughs> Sacco's continue this so, misery. While I'm on fire, I might as well keep keep on churning out this great, I'm just delicious, glad that you gave delicious me this. content. Oh, the the poop emoji. Yes, because that's I'm 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 not quite there yet, but I'm getting close. 
All right. So <laughs> sell me on we, sell me on your sacco. If we have not explained well enough what a what a sacco is, it means you're a loser. Uh, and so you listener are a sacco if you take a defense before the last two rounds. Period. Like you cannot take a defense before the last two rounds. You should not ever take a kicker or a defense before the last two rounds. Ever. Okay. Thank a God. Kick. I'm so glad we're going a this direction with this. I was so nervous. I retract any poop emoji appearances that there were. Thank yes. you. I feel validated. Continue about why we should not draft defenses. So I can say with some certainty that you sh- can draft a kicker before the last two rounds, only if it's one of those studs that I just mentioned, only because they're easier to predict. Defenses are the most difficult position to predict in fantasy football because it, because it's not repeatable. There's too many players that turn over. The schedule changes too much. As soon as you get good, you you put you face a, a more difficult schedule. So the only caveat to me saying that you should not take a defense unless it's the last two rounds is if you actually have heavy scoring points allocated to your defense. So I believe in ESPN standard leagues that it's just based on points, but I'm in a league where we award points for yardage allowed as well. So the defense starts out with 22 points. So in, in that situation, it's a little bit different because there's more emphasis put on defenses. So just to kind of, so my Sacco is going to be the New England Patriots defense because for those of you that have forgotten, they were unbelievable last year. They were the number rank, number one ranked overall defense. Um, in me and Jason's league, which I think is ESPN standard scoring, they outscored the second place defense by 3.5 points a week. Um, they scored 56 more points than than said second place defense and 106 more points than the, than the 12th ranked defense. They were unbelievable. So I, they're just not going to repeat it. No. So it's it's never <laughs> defense no never repeat. Defenses have never in the last 10 years, they have not repeated as back to back. I could not find any information in my searches to the number one defense repeating year after year. My only guess that I could come up with is the Baltimore Ravens in the early 2000s. Um, even yeah, the Bears maybe. of the. Yeah, even the Bears, um, when they were went crazy a couple times at the beginning of the 2010s, um, they did not repeat. And so there's no point. And to what Jason said earlier, there's no point in ever taking a defense early and inevitably somebody always takes a defense early because they filled out their entire roster. They haven't picked a defense yet. And so that's when they pick a defense. So the the reason that why they're my Sacco is because once Lamar Jackson kind of tore them up on a Sunday night football game that I lost a lot of money gambling on, um, they, they were ranked 12th the the 12th overall defense in fantasy football scoring from week nine on. So they, they kind of fell off. Um, if you remember, they started out the season just unbelievable. I think yeah. they like they didn't allow like I think they might have allowed 10 points once in the first like seven weeks or something like that. It was just absolutely asinine. And their fall so also they, dramatically hurt the team in our league that had them because it was propping up win after win after win. And then they fell apart yeah. because of it. Right. And, and the person that had the Patriots defense just took him as a flyer in the last round, whereas somebody was taking the bears defense that went absolutely crazy in 2018, expecting it to repeat in 2019, but it, it just never does. So they also lost to Keem Hicks. Like I am excited for the bears defense this year. Not when they get, now that they're getting a Keem Hicks back. I agree, but don't take him before the last two rounds. But you know, our, our league, we're all bears fans. So it's like, there's no chance. Right. right. That's, that's accurate. Um, so j- just a couple more things about the Patriots defense. So they had seven touchdowns last year, which is a lot <laughs> for in 16 games. Um, that does include return touchdowns. But so they were the only team with seven touchdowns. Three other teams had six touchdowns. One had five touchdowns and five had four touchdowns. Nobody else had more than four defensive touchdowns. So it's just really rare. They're always going to regress back to the mean. Um, you know, even the Bears from 2018, um, when they were the 
the number one defense by, I think, a pretty wide margin. They had six touchdowns in 2018, and they only had two last year. Wow. So they're like, it just doesn't repeat it. So there's no point in in taking. Just don't take a defense before the last two rounds. A couple more things. Um, the Patriots had 25 interceptions last year. The Steelers, who was who was next in line, had 20, and nobody else had more than 17. Wow. Um, the two teams, the two teams that had 17 picks were the Viking and Packers, and they got to play Trubisky and 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 Blue Blau. So uh, there's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> there's just like there. It just, the interceptions just won't repeat itself because right. that's crazy. So, um, and, and the biggest reason is to not pick up or to draft a defense, especially early and, and kind of why I'm focusing on them is because what me and Jason like to do a lot is you're always trying to look ahead to see what schedule looks like and, and picking up a defense a week and a half, two weeks in advance of, you know, last year was pick them up when they're playing the you know, when they're playing the jets or, or, the or Dolphins whatever you can, or the giants, or, like play those matchups, save your sauce, save your fab for somebody else, for injury, for breakout, for anything, for a new target monster breaking out because of whatever, like you're so much more better off than blowing get like nickel and dime for two, three, four, you know, bucks a pop on a week to try and get that number one defensive matchup. Like just, just get it off the bat and you're, you're good to go. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think it's ridiculous to waste your, your, whether you're doing waivers or even your fab, um, on, on defenses, I will, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll dedicate an episode to it at some point, but I don't spend anything until I, I always want to have the most so I can get my guy if I have to get him at the end. So when it comes to picking up defenses, I'm, if somebody else, if I'm not planning more than a week in advance, I'm not worried about what my defense is going to do that week. So right. anyway, the Patriots, they're my Sackos. They're the winning, they're the winningest, uh, uh, football team, uh, in the NFL, but, uh, their defense is my Sackos. And plus you can always just pick up whoever's playing the Colts defense. Cause we all know Phillip Rivers is going to throw that pick at the end of the game. So, <laughs> Oh, man. All right. My Sacco, surprise, surprise, shockingly, Aaron Jones this season. Um, not to say that I think Aaron Jones is going to have a bad season. It's more so to say that I think the Aaron Jones owners are going to be upset that they probably took him either in the first round or at the turn to get him um based on his current value and, and really that's what i'm getting at is i don't like aaron jones value right now um 30 of his production came in two games and we talk about aaron jones in depth in our running back rankings episode uh running backs 13 through 24 uh, 30% of his production came in two games. He scored six touchdowns in those two games. Uh, half of his production came in four. 11 of his 16 touchdowns came in those four games. And then he also, as stated in the previous pod, he put up five single digit scoring weeks. Those being weeks one, six, nine, 12, 13. And he also had a bye in week 11. So nice 11, 12, 13 stretch where he didn't put up really any points. Um, he was 15th in rushing attempts. So again, like trying to show how I don't think that he could, he could very realistically have outside of a top 10 season. Last season, Aaron Jones was 15th in rushing attempts. He was 11th in rushing yards. He had just over a thousand. Um, uh, well, this is fun, but I, I don't know how to make a fun question of it for you out of. But uh, Marlon Mack, Joe Mixon, and Josh Jacobs all had more rushing yards than Aaron Jones did last season. And Aaron Jones was running back too. He was 14th in receptions at the position. He was 12th in targets. Uh, he was eighth, tied for eighth in reception touchdowns with three and tied for first in rushing touchdowns with 16 tied Derek Henry. Derek Henry ran for 500 more yards to get the same amount of rushing touchdowns as Aaron Jones put up last season. Like 
extremely hyper efficient for Aaron Jones to put up the same amount of touchdowns as as Derrick Henry last season. And then the Packers go and they add AJ Dillon. Now, I don't know if he's going to get the goal line work, but if you watch the draft and his highlights and you do like this much research about him and watch him run, he's very much like downhill, straightforward, one cut kind of guy, like perfect for the goal line situation. And he's and he he literally his comps were Derrick Henry, but shorter. Like, and uh, Derrick Henry played for Lafleur in Tennessee in 2018. So, I mean, if that's the kind of runner that he likes, I I don't know. I just question the workload. I think Aaron Jones is also going to be a free agent at the end of the year, and I don't know if they're going to even try to keep him. Um, that's just also like that's more every team right now in the league. Like nobody's really bending over backwards to keep running backs around. So. I mean, if he's outside of the top 10 and realistically like every stat for a running back other than being tied for first in touchdowns, like I really expect that to go down and to be him to finish, you know, if he sneaks inside the top 10, top 12, I won't be surprised, but he'll have to continue that efficiency in order to do so. So. I mean, I'm higher than on, on Aaron Jones than you are, um, and I would not be surprised to see them use him more as like an Austin Eckler type role where he is getting more receptions to kind of offset kind of some of the things that are going on just because they don't have that many weapons and Aaron Rodgers yeah. is going to have to throw to somebody. So oh my I, God, if I, his I targets went up, yeah, that, that'd be crazy. I mean, that's, yeah, a, that's a higher uh, floor. He's a good receiver, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, so I, I don't think he's going to suck by, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but to your point, I, his ADP is a little too high. Um, I would be surprised if I get him in any league because, I, I mean, if he's sitting there middle to end of round two, then maybe I would consider it. It depends on who else is available. But I'm not – He's there's no way he's a first-round pick for me. Yep. All right. Uh, time for sleepers. Who do you have as your sleeper this season? I really wanted to pick a Detroit Lion just so I could sing that the lion sleeps tonight. But I did not do that. <laughs> just just for the like, I really wanted to try to like work in like Kerry Johnson or Marvin Jones Jr. Just something DeAndre like Swift. Uh, yeah, I. That, that's exactly why I couldn't pick anybody there. Uh, sure. So, so just for the record, I, I had it all a wee, like I had it all ready to go and just, just couldn't pull the trigger. So the guy that I'm going with, and this is way deep is Justin Jackson, um, who is, uh, the backup running back maybe for the LA chargers. So in 2018, the Chargers have had three running backs for the last two years. Okay. So we're just going to run down some snap percentages real quick. Ah, so yes. Just, so Justin Jackson in 2018 was on the field for 15% of offensive snaps. Melvin Gordon, who was their starting running back in 2018, was on the field for 53% of offensive snaps. And Austin Eckler was on the field for 35% of snaps. So if you add those up, you're just slightly over 100%. So there was a little bit of overlap with Eckler being on the field uh, with, with Melvin. Last year, 2019, Justin Jackson, he was on the field for 9% of offensive snaps. Melvin Gordon was on the field for 40% of offensive snaps. And Austin Eckler was on the field for 57% of snaps. So still not over 60%. Um, Melvin Gordon is no longer there. So the question comes down to how much more are they going to put Austin Eckler on the field? And if he's not on the field, then theoretically, Justin Jackson will be. So the first three weeks of 2019, um, when, when Eckler was raging, Melvin Gordon wasn't there. Um, he so uh, Justin Jackson had more than five carries in all three games, and he averaged over five yards a carry in all th three of those games. So he was good when he got the ball. Just a small um, sample size. Small sample size. Yeah, of course. But they sure. like they never. Are sleepers. Yeah, but they've never had to give him the ball, and right. so you know when he's proven that they turn around and give him the ball, he makes the most out of it. 
granted, I know Rivers isn't there. The offense is going to look a little bit different with Tyrod or, or whoever ends up being the starter there. But so he's definitely deep on the sleeper list. Justin Jackson has had 30 targets in his first two years in the league. He's caught 24 of them and he has one drop. So he does have hands uh, at Northwestern. He did catch the ball quite a bit. Um, also, all four years in college at Northwestern, he did have over a thousand, a thousand yards rushing. Um, he's essentially the exact same size as Austin Eckler. They're both right around six feet tall, right at 200 pounds. So it's almost like you could just plug and play him in um, with Eckler being there. And there's just from a size standpoint, there's not that big of a difference. And for me, if Eckler were to get hurt, then Justin Jackson is the clear guy there. The only thing that could potentially throw a, a wrinkle into any of this is uh, the Chargers did pick Joshua Kelly in the fourth round. Um, and Justin Jackson was a seventh round pick a couple years ago. So um, Joshua Kelly weighs 12 more pounds than Eckler and Jackson. So he could be the goal line back. So I maybe. Would, so that could be a detractor. I was hoping it'd be Jackson. But at the same time, um, you know, rookie running back weird off season. We don't know what's going to happen. Please let there be football. Um, and, um, Joshua Kelly had 12 rushing touchdowns each of the last two years at UCLA. So he, so, you know, he knows how to get in the end zone. So ultimately Eckler gets hurt. Um, for me, it's Justin Jackson would replace him. I have him ranked at 122 overall in my top 125. Um, I so if he's doing in mine, uh, he's not. You did not rank ah. him in the in the top top one twenty five. Uh, ESPN wow. currently has him going at at one fifty two, um, which is the middle of the twelfth round. So um, he's right on the. Will he get drafted? Will he not get drafted? Um, I think there's some value there just because of the snap percentage. They've never gone all in on on one guy um, on that team. Uh, Lynn's still the head coach out there. So I, I don't know how big of a difference that is, but I, I do think that there will be some work available for whoever the backup running back is in L.A. And so that's why I um, just wanted to highlight Justin Jackson as my sleeper. I think there's an excellent chance that him and Eckler are on the field at the same time. And there's a little bit more of that overlap that you see this year without Gordon in the picture. Uh, I, I envision Eckler splitting out wide a lot to try and create like bubble screens, open space to try and get out to the side and not have to do it was all that work behind the backfield. And obviously in those cases, you'd have Jackson in the backfield. So I would not be Hopefully. surprised. Yeah, right. And you know, if there's audibles and stuff, you know, he gets the ball. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he ends up on a roster and is held throughout the season. He's a fine, I think he's a fine uh, late round dart throw. Yeah, he, he's definitely a handcuff um, for for the people that would have Eckler, in, in my opinion. I don't know how many people actually even do handcuffs anymore, honestly, unless it's like the top like two or three guys. But I, I do think he could have some individual value outside of a handcuff this year. Yep. All right. And my sleeper, Anthony Miller of the Chicago Bears. Homer. Um, Homer, is that, what, is that what you got? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Like it could have been, you know, like other receivers that I would put in like the hype train building and the sleeper train building are like guys like Deontay Johnson and Darius Slayton. Um, you know, they're all sort of kind of the same, um, mm -hmm. young guys bursting with talent, but I'm going to talk about Anthony Miller. He really came on in a big way after, uh, Taylor Gabriel's, uh, injury last season uh, about two thirds of the way through when he was finally deployed as a full-time player from weeks 11 through 15, he had 33 catches for more than 430 yards and two scores. He averaged 5.7 receptions and 72 yards over that span, more than 10 targets a game, which is like wide receiver Sizable. one overall target levels. Like that's, that's more than Devonte Adams. That's more than Julio. That's more than Tyreek. Like that's how much this guy was getting targeted. Yes. He put up a dud in week 16 against the Kansas city chiefs. They basically rolled over the bears who were rolling over themselves at that point last season. And then he got injured in week 17 last year. Um, so I understand it's a small sample size, but again, we're talking sleepers here, so that's okay. Um, if you take that five game stretch and you stretch it out 
over a season, it comes to 91 catches for more than 1,100 yards. Like, that is extremely usable flex territory, like wide receiver three, potential low end wide receiver two territory for a guy that is like ranked in the hundreds that you can get pretty much like guaranteed 11, like 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th round. Um, I'm not worried about Ted Ginn taking playing time away from him because I, I really envision Anthony Miller staying in the slot and I don't think Ginn's going to play the slot. Um, and I'm really not worried about Jimmy Graham. I think everybody saw that Jimmy Graham lost a step when he went to green Bay. And I wouldn't be surprised if he loses another one between green Bay, Wisconsin and <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> it's more than a step probably if oh, we're really man. being honest. Right. But then you add Nick Foles, who I think, I think given the trade and everything, I think we will probably end up starting. Over the 2017 and 18 seasons, uh, Nick Foles targeted players lined up in the slot at the sixth highest rate in the league. Like he loves him. Some slot receivers. You put in Anthony Miller, like there's just so much potential there. So much potential. And then you talk about their schedule. Listen to these first six bears games. The Lions, Giants, Falcons, Colts, Bucks, and Panthers. Like, nothing about that is intimidating. So I think that Anthony Miller could potentially come out of the gate white hot and be, if he goes undrafted in, like, smaller leagues, like 10-teamers, I think he'll be a priority waiver ad after the first week or two. I mean, especially if he's out here getting all these targets. So, yes, that's a bit of a homer pick. Again, I could have talked about other guys, but... Anthony Miller, I think, is a fine sleeper for this season. No, I think that's a really reasonable. But I will also say that I think he lost, you know, just listening to Sports Talk Radio here in Chicago. Like he he was kind of buried last year and really wasn't getting on the field much. And from all indications were is that he just didn't know the playbook and was running the wrong routes. And so that's and, you know, how much of that is defending Trubisky or how much of that is or, you know, just what's what's going on. But supposedly he he wasn't necessarily in in the right spot at the right time, according to where he should have been on given plays. And so that ended him up not playing quite as much. And at the end of the year, when things were. I, I don't know about being over for the Bears, but uh, they weren't trending in the right direction. He kind of came on at the end when, um, to your point, when, when Gabriel was out. And so, I, I mean, I think he's fine. I don't think he's going to be there um, at the beginning of the year the way that you think he is, just because I, I think that if they do rely on Ted Gann or whether they're running, you know, 12 personnel or whatever, we don't know. Uh, I'll be surprised if he's good. I want him to be good. He was so good as a rookie playing he's with electric, like a dislo- man. dislocated shoulder. And he also, you know, he reminded people of Antonio Brown and the way that he was running his routes and what his yeah. size is. But it just didn't happen last year, which is, is not good when they showed up year one and didn't show up year two. So hopefully he gets a fire lit back under him and, and he shows up and is productive. I didn't want to get too much into the coach speak. Because, you know, it's just that's a lot of times that's just what it is. But the Bears wide receiver coach has already come out and said that he's completely changed how he approaches the game and especially this offseason. And all all he's doing is studying film of other receivers and trying to become a better receiver. So hopefully he's studying uh, Allen Robinson, considering he can literally watch him if he just looks over about like, you know, right. 20 yards to his right or left. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I think that does it for our studs, sackos, and sleepers. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm a professional wrestler with a real microphone. Yeah, like it, it, uh, yeah. I mean, after our, our Hayden Hurst Helmsley um, references, and, and and I just feel like I just need to like grab the mic and just like. I, I just feel what, so good talking. What into would one. your wrestling tagline be? Do you, do you want to hear one? I actually wrote one down. Oh my God, <laughs> we did, we, yeah, yes. we did. Yeah, we did. We did not talk about this beforehand, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> Are you kidding? 
No, I, yeah, I wrote, I wrote one down. What is, what is your wrestling tagline? So like, do, are you aware of the new age outlaws for degeneration X? No, not even so a little, you, but I, I want to oh, be, this is, this is like late nineties, uh, early two thousands wrestling. Okay. So here you can probably just go to the, are, are you going to the exit screen? It's going to get bad. I don't know if I want It's on the exit screen, but I'm putting Thank it on God. yours so we can watch oh, for no. the delivery. We're coming back into the if... studios, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, All right, Alex, All right. lay it on us. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, especially you 80 year olds trying to dominate your nursing home fantasy football leagues. Welcome. We probably present to you the zero time fantasy football podcast of the world. The yacht to the sun, the A to the Lex. We are the fantasy football sackos. And if you aren't down with that, we got two words for you. Tell us. So like we want your feedback <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if there's, uh, <laughs> so if, if there's something you want to hear, like we're happy to talk about it. If we suck, please tell us we're, we're looking for your feedback. Uh, we have a website. We are at the fantasy football sackos.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can search for the fantasy football sackos and you'll see my ginger beard. I'm not really sure what more incentives you need than that. And so just thank you for listening. Invite your friends. Tell people what you're listening <laughs> into although after this i don't know if you actually will want to that was legitimately um, it was so much more sophisticated than what i thought it was gonna be i thought it was like i'm a sack daddy i'm gonna hit you with my fatty or something like something <laughs> stupid <laughs> <laughs> and then what well, i was like that, that was a, that was amazing that's gonna have to be the intro clip it's just gonna be that all right, I'll, I'll record something a little bit better. Uh, oh, but beautiful. All right, man. well, <laughs> ladies so and gentlemen, you're, you're welcome for that tree. For the, yeah, oh boy, rough. And you get it all in crystal clear sound. Yes, wonderful. All right, well, on that extremely high note, let's get out of here. Uh, please visit our social medias, the fantasy football sackos.com. We are at the FF Sackos on social media you can listen to us on any platform you can possibly imagine and uh with that thank you have a good night bye